So, this is room 109B in the Ceramic Studio at Penn State University. I'm going to walk you through how to use these facilities in a safe way. I've got a bunch of materials here I've got spread out, some that I've already mixed. I've got the scale that I need, a digital scale that looks like this. Number one, you need to have a mask N95 certified to be working with these uh, materials. Some of them are toxic. The mixing materials in this room requires you wear a dust mask at all times. The other material you should always wear is a pair of gloves. This is kind of like mixing up a recipe. This is the ventilation. The vents are now open. In the winter, we want to make sure those vents are closed. If we move over here, you'll notice there's two light switches. This one turns the lights off in the room. We want to make sure that that one's on. This AHU5 high occupancy is the ventilation switch. Now, since I've closed the ventilation, they're going to make a sound that is bad. It sounds like this. So we want to make sure that we have the shutters open. There's a few steps to mixing a glaze or a slip or any kind of material that ceramics. Number one, you want to make sure that the ventilation is on, you're wearing your mask, and you have a pair of gloves on. The next step is to take an inventory, walk around, and make sure I check off all of the materials that are needed in these containers. And in these containers, the materials in here are predominantly oxides, which are for coloring. The materials here are mason stains, another means of coloring a glaze. There are drawers with numerous materials in them, as well as bins. The bins can be quite heavy, so when opening them, be aware. Okay, I'm not really taking inventory. I'm just pretending to look like I'm taking inventory. Oh, what's this? Oh, hmm. Oh, and then what's in this drawer? Ah, hmm. I'm going to get all the dry materials that I need. I'm going to measure and weigh them out on this scale. So, I'm going to take this plastic container. I'm going to turn the system on. I'll hit zero first. When you zero it, that means that anything that I put on here is going to have a weight. So, when I put my bin on, it weighs 20.2 grams. So, I'm going to hit zero, and I will have a zero for my measurement. To make life a little easier, take a piece of paper towel and place it in the bin. It's going to make it easier to take materials in and out, but now I've thrown off the measurement for the bin. So I'm going to hit zero again, and it's back to zero. I'm going to go around, get the different materials that I need, add them to my bin. There I go. So as you're doing this, make sure you measure out each ingredient and put it into a clean container. Once all the dry materials are in there, you can take them and put them into a solo cup if the ingredients weigh out to 100 grams. Now watch, I go, wait a minute, am I going to put it there? Wait, oh, where we go, we're going to put it into this container, it's nice and clean. And I just almost put it in the wrong place, but I recovered. So now I'm going to talk about how, look, the, the ventilation is so great in this room, it draws all the dust away from you and towards the ventilation, which it does. Since this is your first time mixing glaze, you want to get the material do a preliminary mix. And in doing so, you want the mix to be about the consistency of a half and half cream. I can also use the hand mixer located next to the ventilation. I want to make sure that I put it into the material first and then you don't have to do it a long time but there we 
There are detailed instructions on using the hand blender right here. I take my sieve, place it in this solo cup, and I'm going to One of the things you'll notice I'm doing is as I take the sieve, I remove it from the top of the cup from time to time so that the material can move through. Sometimes the tight fit between the sieve and the cup makes it so that the material doesn't go through the sieve. And now for the cleaning. So here's the run through. When your mixing glaze come in, vent should be turned on. You should have a mask on. You should have gloves. Take inventory of the materials in the room. Make sure that you have everything that you need to correctly mix your test batch. Mix your test batch. Add water. Use the hand blunger. Sieve. Always want to make sure that we mark exactly what is in our container. Now, granted, this is a 5,000 gram batch and rather large, but it's very well detailed in what it is that's in the bucket. If you mix something smaller, again, you can write it right on the container. Thumbs up. When you're done mixing your blaze, make sure you wipe everything down, clean everything up, and put it over to the side of the sink. Never leave a mess. Materials in this room are toxic, and we don't want them sitting around. Not all materials are toxic, but some of them definitely are. So we want to make sure we wipe and down everything when we're done and put the scale back in the box so others can find them. You might be like, hey, where do they go? Well, I just take them along with the cord and put them over there. And then we clean everything off, scrubby scrubby, makey cleany. And when we're done with that, we close the door behind us and we're done.